Now let's talk about what you can expect when you install Visual Studio. Now when it comes to installing Visual Studio for the course that we're working with, we're going to install Visual Studio Community Edition. I'm assuming at this point in the course you have gone out to Microsoft's website and you've downloaded Visual Studio Community Edition files, probably in ISO form, and we're going to take a look at what's going to be involved in installing this. Now the good news is that installing Visual Studio Community Edition is surprisingly uneventful. You just kind of kick it off, answer a few questions, and stare at the computer and it just happens. It doesn't stop. It doesn't usually ask you for a lot of requirements and so forth. It just kind of takes care of things automatically. However, there is one thing that is kind of eventful and that is the installation time. I've installed Community Edition on a number of machines and it takes anywhere from an hour to almost two hours depending on the machine, humidity, and who knows what else is making a difference here. Also, once you install Visual Studio and you finally get to that screen where it advises you that the installation has been successful, there's a couple of things I just want to bring to your attention when you run Visual Studio for the first time. So with that, let's jump out there and show you what you can expect. Now, once you've downloaded the files, you're going to end up with an ISO file. Now, you won't see these other files. I've already extracted them. You will end up with an ISO file like this. Notice the file size in excess of seven gigabytes. So this thing took a little while to download. And once I've got it on my machine, I can right click and extract it or I can burn it to disk or whatever I want to do. But it's going to end up with these files. And really what I'm looking for is this VS underscore community dot exe. So just by double clicking that file, that will start the installation of Visual Studio Community Edition. Now here's one little warning. You will double click on this VS underscore community.exe file and when you do, it just looks like nothing happened. Eventually, this will pop up in the middle of the screen. Now just about the time you're about to restart your machine or go out digging around in Google for what's going on, why won't Visual Studio install, this will finally pop up it can take as long as a minute. So double click the executable file and then just sit there and stare at your machine until this pops up. And so once you see this, you know that the Visual Studio installation is loading and running and eventually you will see this screen. Now you'll notice it's telling you that setup requires up to seven gigabytes of free space across all drives. That will vary based on all sorts of things. And then notice you're going to have to check that you agree to the license terms and privacy policy. They have hypertext links there where you can go out and read those. And then if you would like under that, you can join the Visual Studio Experience Improvement Program. And this kind of reports errors and conditions to Microsoft in the background. That's totally your decision. Then you just click on Next, at the bottom right of the screen. You will see optional features. You can check the ones you want to install. For our purposes here, you can just leave them all checked and you'll be just fine. And then we will click on install in the lower right portion of the screen and kick this installation off. Now you're going to look at a screen that looks just like this for quite a while. The top line is going to show you a status of individual aspects of the installation. That bottom blue line is going to show you the overall installation process. And you will see it paint something like this. And they'll both paint across a few times. And then finally, at some point, and this is usually in excess of an hour after you start the installation and you start to see the blue lines painting, you're going to get the setup completed. Now on all the machines I've installed this on, I don't know how many it is, seven or eight, I have not seen a single error message saying, hey, you need to load this, you need to do that. If you get an error message, just read it, see what they want you to install in addition to whatever you have or whatever you're missing follow the hypertext links they give you, or go out to Microsoft site, download what they need, and then kick off the installation again. So once this is done, and once you finally get to the setup completed screen, then you can click on restart now if you see this. It may just say open Visual Studio. Most of the time on my machines, it has advised me to restart now. So you will just click that and restart your machine. 
Then when it comes back up, you can open Visual Studio. Now, the first time you open Visual Studio, you're going to see a screen very similar to this. Notice it says, welcome, sign in to Visual Studio. And some of you are thinking, wait a minute, what are you talking about, sign in? Well, you can sign in and it will automatically sync your settings between multiple devices. It'll connect you to online developer services. But notice there is in small hypertext blue lettering right under the sign in button. You can just choose not now, maybe later, just to get into Visual Studio locally on your machine and start to work with it. Then you're going to see this screen where you can choose development settings, your color themes. I'll show you how you can change this a little bit later on in the course. And then finally, you're going to get the opportunity to start Visual Studio. Now you think you've finally made it. You're finally ready to do some work in Visual Studio, and then you're going to get this screen. We're preparing for first use. This can be up to maybe five, six minutes. And so just be aware, you may have to wait just a few more minutes before you finally get in, but Visual Studio will open. You'll have Visual Studio installed, and you'll be ready to follow right along with me as we move through the course. So I would set aside about an hour and a half, two hours to go through this installation process.